I'm Cheryl State Bryson, mom, divorcee, health nut, and host of the Healthy Mom After Divorce podcast, where I help divorce moms get healthy, create financial stability, and develop emotional fortitude while they master co-parenting their kids. The place is here, and your time is now. So let's do this. Healthy Mamas, welcome to the Healthy Mom After Divorce podcast with me, your host, Cheryl. This is the 19th episode, and as always, you can find the full transcript for this episode at healthymomafterdivorce.com slash 19. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, I really appreciate the support and the time you've taken to tune in and listen. I'm really excited for today's episode because I get to talk to you about my three stages for learning how to co-parent, especially if you're co-parenting with a high conflict person and becoming the healthiest mom you can be for your kids. I remember early on feeling like I had no direction, no guiding light. I was scattered and lost in a sea of fear and conflict. But even in the darkest foggiest of forests filled with wolves, if you can see a light up ahead, you have direction. You know there is safety if you go that way, and there's inherent comfort in that. When it's really hard and you're struggling and absolutely cannot see the path through yet, having that guiding light provides you that little bit of hope, which will be just enough to keep you going every day. This three-stage framework that I'm about to share is that light. This is the guidepost for making your way through. I did them in the order I'm going to present them. But now that I've kind of moved through them, I float around through them and, you know, I'm in them concurrently. The first stage is educate yourself. Now, on the last episode of this podcast, I talked about five books that I highly recommend reading if you're co-parenting with a high conflict person. And if you haven't had a chance to listen to that one, then I recommend going back and listening. That's at healthymomafterdivorce.com slash 18. So if you're like me, you want information. You want to know the ins and outs, the whys, the how comes, the science, the evidence, that sort of stuff. This is why I found myself diving into the world of high conflict people and abuse and how to co-parent and communicate with them. And the books I talk about in that last episode 18, and these, you know, the books on that list really help me understand what these traits and disorders are like, how they manifest in behavior, how their family plays a role, how they parent children, how they manage in relationships, how smear campaigns work, how to communicate, how to cope with endless litigation, how to co-parent with them. Spoiler alert, uh, you can't parallel parenting, those sorts of things. Now, these books that I listed there are specific to high conflict people, how to identify them, how to protect yourself, and how to deal with them and teach your kids the same. That said, not everyone is co-parenting with a high conflict person. But divorce always comes with some level of conflict and things to learn. So spending the time reading books, watching videos, listening to podcasts, following, you know, people on social media that have tips and tricks and, you know, coaches and that sort of thing, whatever works for you. If you're like me, the information you get will help you feel grounded at a time when you might feel like you're spinning in a hundred different directions. So now armed with all that information, now you move on to the next step. Step number two, find a community and build a community. Now this is very important because there are two pieces to it. Find a community. Odds are you have tried to explain what you went through many times over to family, parents, friends, teachers, counselors, therapists. And although you may have found some sympathetic people, you probably also were met with people who just don't get it. You got divorced for a myriad of reasons, but you will probably find most people won't truly understand, especially if you were in a relationship with a high conflict person. 
And if you're the subject of a smear campaign, either pre or post separation, you probably have the urge to get a giant megaphone and drive around telling everyone that the stories are lies. But you can't do that. And even if you could, people wouldn't likely listen anyways. Trust me, I get it. Nothing is more infuriating than lies being spread about you. But if you try to defend yourself against them to anyone and everyone, you'll seem as crazy as the lies suggest. So what do you do? You find a community. A community of divorced moms, single moms, survivors of abuse, advocates, whatever you're drawn to. And online is a great place to start. There are huge, and I mean huge, communities of people who have gone and are going through what you're going through. You won't have to over-explain and defend. They already get it. And hearing their stories and telling your own will make you feel so validated and seen, you will honestly wish you'd found them sooner. Also, just a reminder, if you're here, you've already found one community. And whether or not you are co-parenting with a high-conflict person, having people around you that share similar experiences around being a divorced mom will instantly validate what you're going through, which will help suppress that urge to shout it from the rooftops. Validation is so therapeutic. Now, the second part of this section is build a community. Now, I'm not talking about going around and telling everyone you see about your experiences. I'm talking about surrounding yourself with trusted family members, teachers, school administrators, counselors, coaches, people outside of you and your co-parent that are there to support you and your kids, who can offer support when needed, who can make accommodations when needed who you can ask to keep an extra eye out for your kids for any areas of concern, who can be healthy role models for them. The kids are not with you all of the time. Think of how much they're with their teachers or coaches. The more people outside of you, and I say people, safe people, outside of you and your co-parent, especially if they're high conflict, that you can involve in the health and well-being of your children, the better. It takes a village, right? Your kids will have the benefit of different perspectives and different people looking out for them. And also you will feel significantly less alone because let's be honest, it really can be a lonely space as a divorce mom. Now the last stage, once you've moved through those and you've kind of built this knowledge base and this community on top of that, now you're at step three. You get to create your healthy life. Now, This stage is the best place to be. At this point, you've figured out what's going on, you have started educating yourself, and you've surrounded yourself by people who get it and who want to help you and your kids. So now you get to focus on your health. For example, you've learned some of the tools, how to communicate with your co-parent and how to talk to your kids when they're struggling with the divorce. But implementing these tools can be very difficult if you're not taking care of yourself. This stuff is really, really hard. And trying to do it day in, day out, when you haven't eaten enough, haven't slept more than five hours a night in months, and spiral on scary thoughts all day, this is not helpful. This is the stage where you get to focus on you. And if you're like most of us divorced moms, focusing on you is not something you do very often. It's the thing that gets pushed aside and falls way down the priority list. But it's time to rethink this. Think of the mom you would be if you improved your mood by going for daily walks, joining a gym, getting enough sleep. Imagine being able to stabilize your mind and get really good at catching it before it spirals into endless worries by exploring mindfulness techniques to train your brain. What about the impact it could have on your kids if you could learn ways to decrease your reactivity to the craziness that you likely have to deal with every day? Picture this. What if your home was your kids' home base and the place they felt the healthiest, safest, and supported. Your body, mind, and the space in which they live and grow is sacred. It is the foundation for how we do everything in life. You are in complete control of this space, and even the most seasoned abusers can't touch it. Your home 
the food you stock it with, the TV shows and movies you have on, the time you go to bed, the books you read, how often you look at your phone, how you spend your time with your kids, all of it. All of it. In this stage, you get to design it, build it, implement, and watch it evolve and grow over time. Now, you may or may not have noticed that all of these things are things you can do, not things that you try to impose on your ex or anyone else. This is what your healing process is like. It's about you, not about them and what they are doing or not doing. They're going to be them. and There's nothing you can do about it. Your healing has nothing to do with their behavior, past or present. Them taking accountability for their actions or apologizing or everyone seeing through their lies or what they do on their parenting time do not matter for you to be a healthy mom for your kids. This is about you and the safe, healthy life you are building for your kids. Remember, educate yourself, find a community and build a community, and then create your healthy life. You got this, mama, and I'm here to help if you need me. You know how this ends, so say it with me. Healthy moms raise healthy kids. Thank you so much for listening. Please leave a review. And if you like what you heard, share this episode with other moms. Don't forget to follow me on social media. And if you want to learn more about me and what else I have to offer, head over to HealthyMomAfterDivorce.com. I can't wait to connect with you.